Hey guys, hi, my name is Chad Bailwell. Today I'll walk you through how to use the Wix toolset to generate and install a for a Visual Studio project. The first thing you need to do is go to this website, wixtoolset.org, and download the installer which is available here. So mostly what you're looking for is a Visual Studio 2017 extension or whichever version of Visual Studio you're using. So once you download and you install, make sure your Visual Studio is closed when you do the installation. So once you install it and come to Visual Studio, you can create a new project or actually add to your any existing project along with your code. Among the options that you will see, you will see something called as a Wix toolset. So click here, usually you can select v3 or v4 I will usually prefer with the version 4 if you have both the versions only then it will show v3 and v4 once you select the v4 it will create the project I'm not going to create one because I already have one created uh, once you add the project over here you will see a separate project along with all the other projects that you have and it's part of the solution so here's my solution. This is for one of the products uh, called Koju for Outlook. This is a Windows application for one of the apps, Koju.movie, that is um, sold by my company in the Android App Store. But we have a Windows app for it that uh, allows you to monitor your contacts for Outlook. So the solution is structured with code base. It has some unit tests, and at the same level, I have to set up project. Now the main file you are looking for is the WKS file. So let me double click on that. This is what a WKS file looks like. So mainly it's an XML file and this is where most of the power of Wix actually comes. It allows you to define your installer in an XML file format, which is very useful. There are some GUI also available, but I did try to use them and they, were, they weren't very easy to use. So I was like, might as well just use the XML file. So first thing you define is your source folder. So all my source files are contained over here. So let me just show you what the file contents look like. Uh, I, by the way, whenever I build my EXEs, I run it through .fiscator to obfuscate some part of the code. So the main files are the three DLLs and the single EXE, which is in, uh, the one with the red icon, that's called Koju. So I want these files to be installed on the user's machine and an uh, icon on the desktop as well as the program files to be created. So once you define that, it you can create a GUID over here and define it. Uh, there are some basic definitions you need to define. Uh, these some of them are already defined in the default uh, this cap file I'm using my application dot but you can define your own embed cap should be yes next thing you want to do is add an installer I can now this is important some people don't prefer to do it but when people are uninstalling your application through the control panel I think it's good to have this so I define this file called ICO I separate the source folder I so I use the source folder that I've defined over here and define a source file. This is how you use the variable source folder inside the XML. So I'm saying go to my source folder, then go to the directory before it, before it, and one more level above it, and the ICO file is there. I've just done this, so uh, I don't have to copy this file again to this folder over here. It's already here, and it's used by the EXE. So just one location now the property ID these are standard MSI file properties uh, which is defined by Microsoft so once you say property ID is ARP production it, you add this icon to the file uh, next thing since this is a dotnet application you need to check for the dotnet version so once uh, you install the pro once a user installs a program and it does not have the specific dotnet version you can display this message and then the program automatically launches the dotnet installer primarily it takes into the site where users can download and install it next you define your directory structure so the idea is 
target there again this is uh, MSI ID you say your program files folder and your ID for the application root directory which is where it's going to install in the program files folder will be Koju for Outlook then you define your application programs folder just call it Koju for Outlook this is how the name of the program is going to look in the program menu and then also define a desktop folder where it's going to create a file uh, launch icon in the desktop now this one is the most important step where you add files to your installer packet so you say directory reference is application root directory which is essentially Koji for Outlook and you say in Koju for Outlook folder when you install the application you copy these files now each file has to be associated with a specific GUID now you have to insert the GUID yourself now the question is how do you generate it so just by going to Google and doing a simple Google search for a GUID gen can show you usually I prefer to use this uh, application called GUID generator and it generates some GUID over here just copy and paste it over here then you add your DLLs like this again thus you give the source of the DLL and you have to give the actual file and this one is very important make sure it's the source folder variable you define uh, with a backslash and the actual file name then you uh, define the application programs folder where it's going to create the shortcut this is how you define that the target for the shortcut is the exe file that you copied uh, you can also add a description so this is my description export and import we call files from Microsoft Outlook and you also have to create a registry key so which helps in uninstallation and this is a Windows requirement on the desktop folder side you again uh, create an icon for the application you can create multiple uh, icons for the exe if you have multiple exes or you can even create an uninstall icon my application is a very simple application so I don't want to create an uninstall icon users can do it from the control panel now this is the last step where you say this is the main application and your component ID that you already defined these should be added to the application so you define the exe and the three dll's then you create an application shortcut and you create an application shortcut in the desktop this application shortcut is created in the program files uh, area when you press the start menu another thing is uh, you want to definitely sign your msi install if you're making it available over the internet you can do that through this uh, the Wix installer but uh, in my experience that's a little bit more painful what you can do is just use command line tools and put that into a batch file so what I do it's very easy to go to the project since this is a Visual Studio project and we can just reuse uh, what we do for a regular dotnet project so you can right click and go to the properties and create a post build event command line which basically is this batch file where I sign the MSI file so you have this all you have to do now is when you have to create an install is just like running a simple exe file or any dotnet project so right click go to build run the build script build is started build succeeded it's created the file so I'm just going to show you this is the folder where the project is it's called setup Koju for Outlook I go to the bin I go to the debug as you can see there was a file in the debug uh, folder earlier but mine is on the more on the release site so it creates this file called Koju for Outlook.msi which has just been created as we uh, ran the build from Visual Studio here's the batch file that as soon as the Wixstone installer runs I actually sign my MSI so let me show you the contents of the batch file and uh, notepad++ always 
needs an update every few weeks. So I go here, this is my sign tool. I prefer to give the whole path of the sign tool because you have to remember the sign tool is not in your path if you're running a normal command prompt. If you're running a developer command area of the command line tool, then you have sign tool in the path. So I just give the full path. I give the sign. This is my PFX file that I sign with. Uh, you can create a PFX file yourself. There are multiple instructions available if you do a Google search mini on MSD and sites. And it's important to add a timestamp. So I use the VeriSign site for adding a timestamp. And this is my MSI file. This was the original name, by the way. The MSI file it creates has to be the name of the project. So my project is called Setup Koju for Outlook. And the MSI file is called this. Then I rename it uh, to another MSI file, which is then which I using an FTP tool, I upload it. I will uh, put this file, uh, give you a link where this file can be downloaded. And if there are any questions, feel feel to email me in the email address given below. All right. Thank you, guys.